The Millennium Consumption Goals, uh, this is a proposal that I made uh, at the United Nations about nine months ago as part of the preparatory process for the uh, UN Conference on uh, Sustainable Development, which is going to take place in 2012, the Rio Plus 20 Conference. What the Millennium Consumption Goals try to do is to make consumption and production patterns more sustainable and thereby we can uh, reduce the burden on the natural resources of the planet, we free up resources to alleviate poverty and also achieve the Millennium Development Goals and finally I think there will be an increase in human well-being throughout the world. Now, um, the basic facts are the following, that currently human consumption is responsible for using up resources equivalent to 1.5 planets Earth. And this is rising. So this is clearly unsustainable. We have only one planet, we cannot use more than what we have. The second point is that there are 2.5 or more than 2 billion poor people in the world and we have promised to raise them out of poverty. Where are the resources to do all of this when we are already over consuming? If you look at the pattern of consumption, you see that the top 20 percentile of the income earners in the planet, that is the 20 percent of the richest people yeah. in the world are using more than 80 percent of the planet's resources. So clearly this is called a process of crowding out that the consumption of the rich is crowding out the development prospects of the poor and therefore the Millennium Consumption Goals simply say that by making the consumption of the rich more sustainable we will allow the Millennium Development Goals for the poor to become a reality. If you want to know what the Millennium Consumption Goals are more specifically, we have several areas. For example, energy consumption, water use, greenhouse gas emissions, land use, uh, things like deforestation and so on, and finally emissions of waste uh, air pollution, uh, water discharges and so on. In all of these areas we can monitor the amount of consumption that is taking place and we can set some targets so that we can improve the situation and this can be done with existing technologies. What we need are a change in people's attitudes and a certain uh, willingness to undertake and what are the, the motivations here? Well, if you look at the 20 percentile of the richest people in the world, they are the, clearly the most educated, they are the most influential, uh, and hopefully they have a bigger stake in the survival of the human uh, socio-economic system as it now stands, because they are at the top of the pyramid. We don't want to go into a situation where there will not be enough resources uh, and there will be other problems of poverty which will cause violent, uncontrolled change. We are trying to manage the system through this system of Millennium Consumption Goals so that we can um, reach a new equilibrium and approach uh, sustainable development. And the beauty of Millennium Consumption Goals is that it is not something that involves the consumption police. Okay. Certainly at the international and the global levels, we have a broad mandate, and this is why we are taking the MCG concept to the Rio Plus 20 meeting next year, that we'll have a broad statement by governments which say this is generally a good idea, without going into too much detail, we will specify some of the areas 
So the areas that I mentioned earlier, like energy, water, greenhouse gas emissions, land use and waste are one, but we can have other areas. For example, uh, the problems of diet, uh, health, obesity, uh, education, um, the financial and banking system reforms. Uh, there are a number of areas on lifestyles and sustainable livelihoods that can be incorporated in this, which basically means the emphasis is not on consuming less, it's consuming better, so that the whole lifestyle and the well-being of individuals is increased, but at the same time, the burden on the environmental resources of the planet is much less, and you're freeing up resources to help the poor. Now this can be done not only at the global level, but also at the level of countries, at the level of cities, of communities, of firms and companies, the private sector, individual households, even individual persons. So it is in a sense a kind of a fractal approach, which is like a snowflake, that whatever scale you look at, you see the same rough pattern. And at the lower levels, we can have voluntary millennium consumption goals. We are getting a tremendous reaction now. We have a movement called the Millennium Consumption Goals Initiative, which was launched uh, at the United Nations uh, Commission on Sustainable Development in May. Uh, at this meeting, the UNDPI conference in Bonn, we launched the Millennium Consumption Goals Network, which is a group of partners, and this is very much a team effort. I'm, I'm not the only person in it. So the whole idea is that we have a voluntary process from the bottom up, where people are saying we don't have to wait for our leaders to take decisions because they know that leaders generally get bogged down. Even in the case of climate change, we saw at Copenhagen and afterwards that the leaders were not finally able to sit down and even come to a simple decision on carbon emissions. So these people who are activists, who are empowered, are simply saying we will declare our own voluntary millennium consumption goals, whether it's cities or companies or households, and we are encouraging that. Eventually, there will be enough producers and consumers working on this so that the governments then also realize that this is a strong movement and then you have action at the national uh, and, the, and the UN level. So this is actually a, both a top-down and a bottom-up approach. Uh, there is a, a loose governance structure and definitely it is not a question of policing or of forcing people to change their consumption patterns.